But as a great philosopher said, the sun is a deadly laser. <laughs> wow. Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurt Gazat's videos. Specifically, this video will save your life next week. Really? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. Let's save your life today, not long term, today. today. By specifically finding out what's most likely to kill you next week so you can actually avoid it. Now that's interesting. I wonder if it'll get into perceived risk versus actual risk. First, let's assume that 3 million people will watch this video and that you're all among our typical viewers. You're between the ages of 15 and 35 and you're living in Western countries. Thus far, that's true about me. We base this video on statistics specifically for your demographic and our own estimates. They're not perfect, but sources. roughly correct. Don't worry, we might also save your life if you're older or live somewhere else. Okay, <laughs> sure. now let's gather all 3 million of you in 40 packed football stadiums. Look around. Most of you are teens and young adults. Okay, so that right there, if you actually did that, that would do the opposite of saving lives because you're packing people in close areas. You're going to increase the chance of spreading diseases. Plus, if all these stadiums are right next to each other, by the time this video is over or whatever, and you're getting people to leave, there's going to be quite a bit of congestion, a lot, quite a bit of traffic. So by virtue of moving all of this people to this zone, you're going to increase risk of dying from accidents. So, not off to a very good start. So much potential. Unfortunately, by the end of next week, 58 of you watching right now will not be alive anymore. 3,000 of you will sadly have passed. Any okay, so they're getting these statistics from the WHO from 2023. That, that actually sounds plausible. Yeah, that's one in 1,000. Or not. Today, we will save your, yes, your life by looking at the avoidable ways you might die. We'll not cover long-term things like diseases because we want to prevent your death next week. Sure. Okay, so probably accidents. Your life consists of millions of micro decisions and some of you are on a path that will end soon. Can we guide you down Spiky. a different path? Humans are incredibly bad at judging the real risks of life. Bad things happen to people all the time because there are so many of us. And People have judged it wrong between uh, nuclear power plants versus coal power plants. By the way, for that, the deaths per terawatt hour, which for a nuclear plant is running a thousand hours straight. For nuclear, it's 0 0.03 deaths per terawatt hour. And that's including all aspects of the chain, including mining, power generation, and nuclear waste management. And yes, Chernobyl is lumped in there. And not just the 50 deaths, the 4,000 deaths that are the overly conservative estimate that includes people in the affected regions that haven't been born yet. And that accident happened back in 1986. Comparatively for coal, 24.6 deaths per terawatt hour. And that includes their whole value chain, mining accidents, air pollution generated by the coal plants, and other long-term health impacts. Natural gas is about 2.8, hydro is 1.3, and wind and solar are comparable to nuclear. The main ways people die from those are falling from elevated structures like wind turbines or roofs where you put the solar panels or manufacturing related accidents. Since the news focuses so much on freak accidents, we have a completely distorted picture of what actually poses a danger to <laughs> uh, Florida man. Speaking of statistical anomalies right there. For example, the chance any of you are going to die in a terror attack is below 0.0002%. In a week, sure, yeah. It's not zero though. There are super risky activities that are clearly insanely dangerous, like wingsuit flying. 
If all three million of you were to practice this sport, about 285 of you would die just next week. Wow. Then there are things that are pretty- That actually sounds low. I mean, especially since I wonder how many of us know how to fly in a wingsuit. Of course, maybe it's low because a lot of people would still just be going through orientation of how to fly in a wingsuit without actually flying yet. Maybe that's the reason why dangerous. If all of you rode a motorcycle, 35 of you would not survive next week. If you don't want this kind of risk in your life, well, don't do these things. This is wearing a helmet. It turns out what's most likely to kill you next week are things that feel safe, Driving. that you do all the time, and are routine. Things you may even be really good at. This is what we'll prevent. By far the most dangerous thing you're currently doing is driving. Yep. Eight of you will die in a car crash just next week. 416 of you over the next year. Mostly because most of you are not aware what driving really is. You're zooming through the world in a metal torpedo at the speed of a cheetah or faster mm -hmm. in an average car that weighs one and a half tons at roughly 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour. You have the mechanical energy of a piano dropped from the top of the Statue of Liberty. If you crash, this energy is released into your car and more importantly, your body. By far the most dangerous aspect of working in the nuclear power plant was my commute. It was one hour away from my house, so two hours commuting in a car. By far the most dangerous thing I've ever done. Way more dangerous than being in radiological controlled areas or going inside the reactor containment building. 30% of deadly car accidents are caused by speeding, mostly because you overestimate yourself. But that will kill two of you next week. It's very straightforward. If you go f or somebody else overestimates themselves and they're the initiator of the accident. Fast, you have less time to react and only notice the danger when it's too late. A lot of you watching tend to go over the speed limit regularly, which saves very little time. If your destination is 20 minutes away at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, driving 15 kilometers an hour or 10 miles an hour faster will save less than three minutes. Where I live, speeding is not much of an option, too much traffic. Most people are going way less than the speed limit. But your probability of a deadly crash increases by 60%. Mm. So two of you may survive next week if you just tone down your speeding. This alone would eliminate Whoa. the most dangerous... Spooky car. ...interest activity in your life. Isn't this wild? The close second is drinking alcohol and driving causing 25% of deadly crashes. That's a deadly combination. In the next week, this will also kill two of you. You don't even need to feel drunk. You just have to have consumed enough to slow your reaction time. Even if you still feel completely in control, chances are high that you're not. Aside from being extremely yeah, illegal, drive, it's one of the most reckless and dangerous things too many people do regularly. And it's easy to avoid. Just don't do it, ever. Taking a cab after that work event next week, even if you only had two drinks, might save your life. Just because yep. you were distracted while driving, one of you will die next week. Maybe because you were eating or fumbling with the radio, but let's be real, probably because you were looking at your phone. If you drive at 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles an hour and check your phone for just a moment, you've now crossed an entire football field, completely blind. Shrek. Stop doing this, and you might survive next week. These are good things. Quite a bit of defensive driving actually comes up and is taught along with training on nuclear safety at a nuclear plant. Because like I said, it's the most dangerous part of the job is the commute. So defensive driving is taught. Uh, one of my favorite lessons from defensive driving is when someone has their blinker on, what does it mean? And the answer is not, it means they're going to turn. It just means their blinker's working. And that's it. Don't assume they're going to turn. Lastly, we want to have an especially frank word with the three of you that will die because you didn't wear a seatbelt. What an incredibly stupid way to die young. Way more of you... What's fascinating to me about the seatbelt is it was invented in the 1800s, but it didn't become mandatory until the 1960s. And that wasn't everywhere either. So as a nuclear engineer, it's fascinating to me that a piece of safety equipment has been invented, but not required for such a long period of time. Can I imagine having nuclear power plants without any safety systems for 50, 70, 80 years after the first nuclear power plant was invented 
So we'd be just now seeing safety systems roll out now. Ugh, I can only imagine the amount of nuclear accidents. We'll get into a car crash and be injured for all the same reasons. And of course, often the victims of crashes are not to blame at all, and many of you watching right now will end up hurting someone else. Yeah. But you now know how to reduce the chances of this happening massively. Let's move on to other deadly things that you can easily avoid. 26 of you will die by falling, or more precisely, by hitting the ground in the next year. By hitting the ground. <laughs> I see what they did there, because technically orbiting the Earth is falling without hitting the ground. Which means one of you will die every two weeks. You'd think the danger of height was not as big of a deal, but it is. Going up ladders, working on scaffolding or on a roof, and going hiking in nature is normal. But Again, I think I've mentioned this before in other videos, but the most common workplace accidents at a nuclear power plant are the same ones you see at any industrial facility. It's things like getting your fingers jammed in doorways, slips, trips, and falls, having stuff in the overhead fall on top of your head, which is especially bad if you're not wearing a hard hat. It's those sort of things. Integrated nuclear plant startups with all the safety briefings and critical nuclear operations. Way less examples of people getting hurt with that because people take it so seriously because it's non-routine. You have so many added pre-job briefings, but most people don't think and don't prepare. It's like, huh, I wonder if when I open this door, I'm going to get my finger stuck in. Falling from a height of just two meters has about the same mechanical energy as a bowling ball dropped from a seven-story building. You probably wouldn't want to be hit by it, and it only gets worse the higher you go. And if you hit your head. For a fall from five meters, the height of a large ladder, the equivalent would be the energy of a bowling ball dropped from a 19-story building. But even just falling over can easily be fatal because your head is all the way at the top of your body. Yes. Another surprisingly dangerous thing is water. One of you will drown next week. That's especially terrifying for children. Being in and around water is fun and doesn't seem to be a big deal, mainly for three reasons. You'll underestimate how dangerous a body of water is and be taken by strong currents or riptides. You'll overestimate your swimming abilities. You're most likely a much worse swimmer than you think. Or, also sadly common, you'll go into the water drunk. Especially dangerous Ooh. because you're more reckless and even more likely to be overwhelmed by a cold shock or hypothermia. Harmless situations around... Water is very powerful. That's one of the reasons why we use it as a coolant as well as the energy supply for the turbine and generator systems to make electricity. Do not underestimate it. Water turned deadly so quickly that in the US, drowning is the second most common cause of death by accident for kids after, you may have guessed it, car crashes. So if you're going for a swim next week, keep this in mind. Make sure that the water is safe, assume you are at best a mediocre swimmer, and you won't die. Yeah. Also, for the love of God, be careful on cruise ships. If you go overboard, you have a 60% chance of dying. I didn't Let's know move on wow. to the thing that will kill the most people watching this video. This one is extremely sad and very delicate because sensationalist public discussion can make it worse. It's harming yourself. Mm. Statistically, about 10 of you could die this way next week. There's something that you might not be aware of that might save your life. The majority of these deaths happen in crisis situations, usually triggered by traumatic events and extraordinary circumstances that overwhelm people and undermine their coping strategies. Studies show that suicide rarely occurs out of the blue. There are warning signs and often suicidal thoughts and feelings can be mastered by getting professional help, for example, from a crisis intervention center. Most people who survive an attempt don't try again and end up being very glad that they did survive. It was I didn't actually think this video would go this way, but I shouldn't be surprised. That's one of the things that's very clearly onboarding at the nuclear plant, really every place I've ever worked, is if you're in a crisis, get help. There's there's hotlines. Um, where I work, there's always been employee concerns, employee crisis hotlines. If you or, or a loved one is affected, know the signs and get help. Just way too much for them, and they felt desperate and as if there was no way out. It would be so, so nice if someone watching this who's in a bad spot decides to get help. You matter. You really do. And the world is better with you in it. Well said. Please stay with us. If you currently feel overwhelmed by life, seeking help is not weakness, it's strength. 
we've put some resources for you in the video description. This also means another thing. If you have someone in your life going through a crisis, withdrawing, expressing hopelessness, or talking about this topic, even jokingly, take it seriously. Show them that they're loved yeah, and it's important. Not a joke. It's no joke. You personally could save a life, maybe next week already. You might never know, but worst case, you've been a true friend. Now for the f again, if you need help, get help. If you see someone who needs help, get them professional help. Final thing, and to be honest, this will not save your life next week, but maybe this year. Cancer is sadly a real risk, even for your age group, and will kill five of you next week. The most common being thyroid, breast, and testicular cancer. So thyroid is actually a scenario that is trained and prepared for after nuclear accidents. So immediately after a nuclear accident, kind of the large early release, the main hazard is iodine-131. There are other isotopes like cesium-137 that stay around for a long time, such as after the Chernobyl event. But back to the theme of this video, a large puff release, it's going to be iodine-131. In fact, the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission has a convenient unit just called Dose Equivalent Iodine-131 when measuring off-site doses. It's a bit like using Hiroshima as a unit of measure for the destructive power of nuclear weapons. So during a nuclear accident, if you happen to be downwind of the effect plume, the emergency director may authorize the use of potassium iodide tablets. And what those do is they saturate the thyroid glands with non-radioactive iodine. So iodine-131 can't be uptaken by the person that's exposed to it. So reducing the likelihood of iodine-131 being absorbed reduces the chance of thyroid cancer. Note that it only protects the thyroid, but that's the most likely cancerous immediate effect if you're a few miles downstream of a radioactive plume post-accident in the short term. It doesn't protect you from other forms of radiation. The author of this video had cancer at the age of 32. If he'd been aware of this risk and went to regular checkups, this could have been entirely avoided. Mm. So this is also a personal heartfelt recommendation. We collected a few resources about screenings and self-checkups in our sources for you. Check them out. At least one type of cancer is almost entirely avoidable. Melanoma or skin cancer. Yes. You might be surprised how deadly this is, but as a great philosopher said, the sun is a deadly laser. <laughs> wow. I didn't expect this crossover. But in all seriousness, uh, yeah, it's, it's radiation burn. Specifically UVB, which is partially ionizing. That's the one that increases your risk of skin cancer. Limit your exposure. Use sunscreen. Just like pr protecting yourself from any sort of radiation. Time, distance, and shielding. Can't do much about distance because we're already about 93 million miles away from the sun, but limit your time and shielding being clothing and sunscreen. It's burning your skin with the energy released from trillions of tons of plasma. The solution couldn't be simpler. Use sunscreen. I don't think I would count deaths from skin cancer as deaths from nuclear fusion, even though that's all the sun is. It's been a while or you've been in the water. Cool. Apply it again. About nine of you will die of melanoma in the next year, so sunscreen might save your life. Okay, let's wrap up. Just by being more aware and modifying your behavior a little bit, you personally could survive next week. Dozens of all of you watching right now. Hundreds of you this year. Hopefully, you'll be able to tell us stories in the next few years of situations that almost turned really bad, but didn't because you behaved differently. And if you have people in your life that do or don't do the things we talked about today, please send them this video. It might save their lives too. Life is just the best thing, and we hope to celebrate it together. Back to the stadium idea, if you did keep people there for a week straight, you might be looking at 1-5% to 5 mortality due to overcrowding, heat or cold stress, depending on where these are, and likely some of them may have medical emergency. But if you magically teleport everyone back, you're good. Together for as long as possible. Overall, that was good, and it really holds a mirror back up as far as perceived risk versus actual risk. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.